Hey, welcome back, Tyler, Theater Design Company. So as you can see in the background, we got kind of some weird stuff going on. What you're seeing is uh, three sample boards we're building for fabric walls. And what we're gonna do is uh, kind of time lapse these and then we'll stop and show you key elements and basically try to teach you how to do fabric walls if this is something you wanted to do in house. Hey guys, I'm just gonna jump in here real quick uh, as I'm editing this video. We've uh, added chapters above this uh, video ended up being extremely long so we figure uh, a lot of the content people might want to jump to there's some time lapse you could skip through that regardless the chapters are all sitting above hope you like the video we have a uh, new supplier as well as our past supplier kinetic noise which we still use for track so we can actually do track uh, dimensions uh, up to 10 feet now in length we can do half inch five eighths, one inch, inch and a half, two inch depths. So that's new to our SKUs. And uh, we can obviously ship and help you get these anywhere in the uh, country. Um, of course, if you're in the Washington or um, you know even like Idaho, Oregon, we can do uh, fit some fabric wall installs for you. Um, however, this one, we're just gonna show you how we do it. And so first board, we're gonna do a perimeter track all the way around. And then we're gonna wrap that in fabric. And then the one other thing we're going to show you on this is when you run into like an outlet. So imagine you had a, uh, a duplex power outlet here. We'll show you how we fur that out and do a finished product on that. The second one, we're going to do the same thing, perimeter. So we'll track with perimeter, but we're going to do a mid wall seam. So if you get a, into a fabric wall, obviously fabric's going to come in a maximum of a 66 inch width uh, from almost any vendor. It doesn't matter who you're buying it from. Uh, you're most likely going to have some sort of seam or a mid wall, or maybe you want to use that and as a design element itself. So anyway, we're going to do a mid wall there, and then we're actually going to kind of do a flushed in uh, grill, as if you, maybe you had a speaker right here. You know, again, this isn't to scale, but maybe you had a speaker here in your wall, and you wanted to cover that with a grill, but still have it serviceable. Anyway, so another finished panel there. The last one will be kind of the most advanced one. Again, perimeter track. Then we're going to do a mid wall track and wrap it around one time. And then we're going to do a second mid wall on the inside. What that's going to create is a fabric wall, a black onyx border, and then we're going to French in a Seymour screen. So that's what we've been doing on jobs. I think we've done five jobs with, like that now. And we've uh, by the Seymour Neo material and we'll stretch that into a track, which means you have a nice finished, real clean, modern design on your front wall but you still get the benefit of having an onyx fabric. You could even use velvet, but you can you know, lock that light in so you have your light bleed or your masking, and then you can have your fabric color of your choice. Now, again, most likely on a front wall, you're never gonna do that because you want the whole wall to be black, but some people aesthetics are just as important as how the room functions. So anyway, we're gonna get to filming these. I will stop and show you as much as I can during them. Obviously show you the finished product. We'll show you how we anchor them. And then again, we can actually sell these to you anywhere in the U.S., ship them out to you. A lot of it will come freight. We can uh, sell you the fabric, though, and that'll get drop shipped most likely to your job site. And then we'll show you what tools we're using as well as saw blades. So pretty in-depth video, something we can also send to contractors and so on. So well worth us making this one. So stay tuned and uh, we'll get to wrapping these things up. Okay, so the first thing I like to do when we're doing any of these rooms is get uh, just kind of get a marking around where the track's going to go, make some notes. It's all going to get covered up, so some little pencil notes can save you some grief later on. Uh, in this case, these boards are 20 inches wide, so you got a 20 inch wide board. Got room for our handle, so we want to get a 20 inch mark and have a perfect square. So 20 inch square, 20 inch square, 20 inch square. Again, your panel is going to be larger. This is just for demo purposes. And then I'm going to mock up our outlet here. I'm going to mock up a speaker grill here. I'm going to mock up our mid wall. And I'm going to mock up our screen size. So what I would do on the screen size one is I'd mock up our screen. I'd write down, you know, it's a 160 inch screen. I'd get our dimension across the top, our height, maybe even put a diagonal measurement. And then we got to factor our fabric in as well. So first one I'm going to do is these. And again, I'm just kind of time lapsing these. So I'll, I'll skip forward to a stop where I need to, but at least you get an idea of what I'm doing. Okay, this will give you a better idea of what we're trying to do here. So 20 inch by 20 inch square, we've marked our outline of our track. Doesn't have to be perfect. We know that these are going to be 20 inch to the edge, beveled, so at 45s. 
This one, however, though, we've done our mid wall edge to the right. So now we'll have a mid wall come straight down this center line. We've got our speaker mocked up right here. And then again, we're doing our perimeter. And then this one, we've got our screen. And again, I'm just sketching these out as again a reference as you go through it. You're obviously going to be cutting perfectly square pieces uh, unless your room's cattywampus. But in our case, all of our perimeters are going to be 20 inches. So we'll end up cutting, you know, four, eight, 12 exact cuts at these perimeters and screw that off. And then we'll do the same thing with our screen. We're going to have two identical left and rights, two identical tops and bottoms, and exactly the same with the speaker. This one, however, for the outlet, we're going to do that out of wood, and I'll show you why. So again, keep on with the time lapse, and I'll uh, get to cutting some track here and uh, give you an idea what we got going on. Okay, quick explanation here. So we're in the shop. I want to show you what blade not to use. So this is just your typical DeWalt framing blade, you know, cutting two by fours, rough cuts, uh, no finish work on this one. Uh, don't cut track with this. Um, it will uh, crack the track, even with the softest track from like Track Daddy. But uh, the kinetic noise, which is also a pretty soft track, it will just go flying everywhere, crack out. Just won't give you a finished product that you like. So I'm going to try to uh, get on the tripod and actually show you one just kind of flying off and breaking because uh, it's going to do it no matter what. I could probably get maybe one or two cuts in before it does that, going super slow. And then I'll put the correct blade on that we use. And uh, you'll kind of be shocked at the blade we use, but we actually use a kind of a fine tooth aluminum blade and it just cuts through the track like butter. You still can't go crazy, but I uh, figured I would show you that as well. And uh, I'll highlight that in when I'm tracking it. And then you're gonna see the time lapse of us uh, building all the frames and surrounds for our boards. And then we'll uh, start to wrap these in fabric. So anyway, I figured I would show you that real quick. Okay, so here we're doing a cut on the track. I'm doing a very slow pressure down and it's making a decent cut. So you gotta be very careful if you're gonna use a blade like that and not use a more fine tooth blade. That one seemed to cut okay. And then here I do it in slow motion doing the same exact pressure down, no difference. And you can kind of see how it just explodes. It just, the bigger teeth catch the fat, you know, catch the track, fabric track, and it just kind of blows away. So boom, right there you saw the top chip off, bottom chip off, and you just got yourself a terrible cut not only that, if you're in your shop, you've got pieces of plastic just flying all over the shop. It's going to hit you and so on. So, and then here you can see I'm kind of showing you the uh, sharp edge of it. So definitely don't use a uh, rough cut blade for that. And then we're going to jump into the uh, correct blade right now that we like to use. Okay, back in the shop, just want to show you the blade we use. So 100 tooth aluminum slash plastic blade. This one is from a company called Tomax. So Amazon, I believe is there where we got this one. It seemed to work pretty well. We may have got this one at Tacoma Screw Up here, but regardless, I'll send a link if it is on Amazon on the bottom. This blade just works perfect cutting this plastic. So I'm not even gonna show you how it cuts. You'll see all the edges are nice and clean, but uh, yeah, don't do a rough blade. Definitely use something like this. And uh, I'm gonna get to cutting all these uh, perimeters and then we'll uh, go from there. Okay, so a quick little update. I obviously wasn't gonna show you me cutting all these. It made no sense. This is our uh, panel number one. So again, four even 20 inch perimeter panels. And then this is the piece of wood blocking I was talking about. So that will mount to the wall. And then you may need a box extender depending on your outlet. But again, that's what the outlet would go into. I'm, if you're uh, doing an electrical or DIY, you probably am following what I'm saying. Cause you're gonna have an outlet in the wall and you obviously can't have it recessed with the fabric couple quick notes when we do these this face of this wood panel has to be perfectly smooth so we'll take a belt sander or a uh, put it on even a sanding disc and just keep this completely smooth the fabric can pick up little wrinkles I mean less than a sixteenth of an inch 330 seconds uh, fairly easy so keep that in mind box extender and then jumping over this is our second panel so what we got is a a top left and right a bottom left and right center mid wall section and then our left and right sides and then this is how we boxed in our speaker grill so keep in mind that would be a speaker and this is going to be grill cloth as I continue with the project 
and uh, go through all the instructions you'll follow more on. So again, the number three, four perimeters. This is our Seymour screen opening. This secondary outer opening is our fabric. Now again, the way this is smaller, I don't have to build any little styles through here. If you're doing a full size screen, you know, for example, a 120 inch screen is about 58 inches tall. You're not gonna be able to find fabric that's gonna wrap usually all the way around there. So anything, I'd say 120 and above, you're gonna have to build a little panel in here so you can section the fabric. At 120 and under, you should be able to use a solid piece and just wrap it in like I'm gonna show you. So anyway, we're gonna jump back into uh, assembling all these on the time lapse, and then I'll jump in. After these are screwed in, I'm gonna show you the screws I use, and then I'll show you the finished product. And after that, it's pretty much just wrapping fabric. And then we don't wanna make sure, we wanna make sure we don't miss the key element that goes into these, which is the Knopf insulation board or kinetic stealth panels or kinetic tad panels. So the reason you're probably doing this is one, aesthetics and fabric, but it makes no sense just to have these panels sitting on the ground behind wood or drywall. So that being said, you're gonna to wanna to put some sort of insulation or acoustical treatments behind there. So jumping over here, we have a few of the different acoustical treatments. So this is Knopf six pound board. They also make a three pound board. This is a kinetic noise stealth. So these were in our old demo room. These are my favorite for rear wall diffusers. They're perfect. And then these are super universal. They're called TAD panels. We use these a lot for first reflection points. So they'll actually reflect a little bit, but they'll also suck some sound in. So, and I don't go into the crazy technical stuff like some of these acoustical guys. You can see what works. You can hear what works. And if you look at enough rooms and go into this stuff, it all makes sense. So you don't need to go ballistically crazy and spend 50 grand on a design to just to tell them that you're gonna put the same stuff that most everybody does on their first reflection points. And there's all sorts of videos to find all those speaker reflection points. And there's you know a solid half day of searching on Google and doing some research along with a simple acoustical plan from GIK Acoustics or the one we use is the Illuminations from Kinetic Noise. You know, and even one of those at a full retail number, uh, you know, having someone draw out your room and design it is twenty five hundred to three grand. So don't go, don't go crazy. I got a lot of customers that have went and spent, you know, literally fifteen twenty. I had a customer spend fifty grand on a design for acoustics. Now that was an elaborate design, and it probably made sense to spend maybe half that. But I, I think you know, overall, he just got taken to the cleaners. Um, and it was a bunch of mumbo jumbo stuff and it was all stuff that he could have researched and found out So and I'm not saying wing it, but don't don't go crazy and spend a million dollars And if you're watching this video, you, you know, you're doing it because you want to learn how to do this stuff When we design these rooms and we're fabric, you know Fabric walling them out and doing in-wall screens and hiding speakers and doing all this The clients got the money to just to pay for us to do it and they don't or they don't have the time to do it and so I don't mind showing these videos on how this stuff works because I don't think a lot of the clients that we're, we're dealing with are gonna try to negotiate and go crazy on uh, pricing after they see this. And I don't really think they're gonna try to take it on themselves because it's a ton of work. Okay, we're getting close to getting these mounted to our boards. I wanted to show you two different things. The little screws we use. These are three quarter inch pan heads with self-tapping. So they basically, each one of these has a little tiny drill bit on them. And as you can see, we buy them in bulk. So we buy about 500 in each box and we'll buy five, six boxes at a time. So don't go to your local home store to try to buy these because to do a fabric wall system, you're gonna spend 80, 90 bucks on screws and you can buy a couple boxes from us for 25, $30 shipped and save yourself at least half the money. Other things you're gonna need, just a basic cheap flat file. You're gonna come and find these edges are super sharp. And I mean sharp, like razor blade sharp. So you're gonna to wanna to grind these down with a little file or just come through. I don't do a lot of it, but if I feel the edge, I'll come through and hit the file with it. And then, you know, if you don't have one already, I, I stress these on a bunch of my videos, get yourself a little Pika pencil. So you can make the tip super sharp for real fine detail work. And then last, but I mean, just drill obviously, but I like to have a longer drill bit because a small bit your head of your drill is going to hit each time you try to screw down so 
this is obviously a six inch you don't need to have that long but you know get yourself an extension phillips that's two inches three inches so you can get past this inch and an eighth of material so i'm going to go ahead and throw the uh, camera on the tripod and assemble as much as i can this in time lapse mode and then i'll hop in when i need to if i need to uh, we should be getting to a point we're going to start wrapping these with some uh insulation board and uh, acoustic material and then uh wrap the fabric all right Okay, so I got this on the tripod. I'm gonna uh, just kind of let this thing time lapse out and there's uh, no reason for me to really narrate, narrate unless I see something crazy and uh, it's gonna go from there. Okay, I wanted to hop in here real quick. I did see something that might help some people. So as you can see, you might have noticed when I did this one, I would pin the bottom, keep the top loose. So again, I pin the bottom, but the top's loose. And then this one, I pin the bottom, top's loose. That lets me drop this in and slide it over to level. So same thing. See, I can now, it's loose, so I can get it all where I want. And then you'll also see I'm following these guidelines to a, an extent. So I was able to get this guideline along the bottom. And when I hit that top, you can see my lines coming down pretty good as well. So, and again, I'm going really fast on these. Don't think you're gonna do these super quick the first try. This one obviously was no problem. And then you can see I just pinned this piece of block in, but that's where your outlet would go. You'd use that little white extendo box because you don't want to have any exposed electrical. And then I'll show you why we're doing this with the fabric. And again, I just pinned it in because this is a demo. What you would end up doing is probably using some construction adhesive, set this up top of your outlet. You're gonna have your J box inside of here and you'll let that sit overnight and dry and then you don't even probably need to use any fasteners. So I'm gonna tweak and adjust this little area and then I'm gonna jump over to the real hard one, which is the screen. Okay, so we've got all our tracking done. So I'll start with number one. So use about every four or five inches on the pan head screws, outlet cover. So this one will be ready to wrap after we throw some insulation in. Our second one, mid wall. You'll note some little stuff like this where the corner gets off, it's because the fabric hasn't pushed it in. Same right here, so you pull it in with your hand and that's the fabric's gonna pull the rest of that in to get your little gap. You're gonna see that on this track. The half inch track's a little easier to work with, but then again, half inch, five eighths, you have to fur it back out with some sort of plywood or something to get it back out to a normal inch, inch and an eighth gap for your insulation. And then this one here is obviously very hard to do and we went pretty quick on it, but this is gonna be our inner screen, our black masking area for the projection over scan and then you're gonna have our fabric so again and it's not a hundred percent perfect although again it will stretch in and look great once it's all wrapped up and then I'll come through and I'll hit my sand on each one of these little corners because it's again that's sharp so you want to just do a quick file or a quick sand with some sandpaper and then the next step is I'm gonna uh, go ahead and wrap some material in here and what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take and and fold this fabric over so you can see the grill of our speaker, but I want to be able to see a little bit of our NOF foam here. And then as it comes down, I want to be able to see our TAD panel. And I think I'm gonna do the same thing on this one where I'm gonna fold the material over and do a little bit of our material. Cause I want to be able to show that, you know, here you've got some NOF foam behind it and then it's fabric wrapped with a nice finished trimmed edge Lutron plate. And the same thing, wrap around here and then maybe even fold this over and cut a little, build like a little, uh, full color speaker so they can understand what that is screen i'll do complete just because it's a nice finished thing but i want to be able to show this with our stealth tad 
and our six pound insulation because again this is for demo use plus you guys will be able to see what it's all about too so anyway i'm pretty happy with this it'll be pretty nice when it's all trimmed out and uh it'll really give the effect of what we're trying to do here okay so last little uh clip before we do the fabric installation so as you can see we've got our knoff six pound board in we've got this routed around i wanted to show you this so Little things like that will show up in the fabric. So you wanna make sure you have no insulation board popping up over any of your track. Through a little outlet pitcher in there just so you can understand that was for the outlet. And then keep in mind, you're gonna to wanna to use an extension box, something like that. Once you're finished, this would go into the blue J box and then you'd wrap it up with an outlet. Our second one, what I decided to do is I'm gonna fold the fabric down here for our display board, but you've got an off six pound. This does come in a three pound as well. You've got the kinetic noise stealth diffuser and then the tad panel below. And again, we'll wrap our fabric down. And then here we've put a Kef 3160 in, one of our favorite speakers, and we've wrapped it in off board. And then we've got our mid wall seam. So that should look pretty good with fabric. And then our final one, we threw kind of a cool Crix uh, behind the screen system in and what you can see here is this will be our Seymour screen excellence neo screen black onyx material and then we're going to wrap this whole rest of this in a fabric of our choice so this will be our three display boards and i think it'll uh, give you a really good idea on how to do fabric walls and then uh, obviously we're doing this for our business so we can take these out to customers homes but this will be a good uh, training video for everybody on how to do this uh, only other note I would have is if you're trying to do this track directly to drywall, don't try to do it. Use some sort of half inch material and then buy the 5 8 inch uh, track, get you back to your infant H. Okay, so kind of continuing this, you saw the time lapse of us wrapping the fabric. So you can see it's a little loose here. This was a uh, wrinkled fabric we had. This was some samples we left, left over from another room we did. And you're probably wondering like, man, there's no cutouts, what's going on? Well, it's easy to find your cutout. So right here, you've got the cutout for our outlet. You can kind of feel there's our cutout for our speaker. As mentioned, we wanted to wrap this around. So we did a little folding seam here with the factory edge. And just fold it over so again knoff six pound stealth diffuser tad diffuser and again you can put other types of uh, one inch material in there and then this one we've just wrapped the whole panel so wanted to show you just a couple tools we use so these are basically fabric mate tools we have a couple other ones we actually have some new ones we ordered from uh, lbi boyd which are uh, like anodized aluminum just some high-tech stuff because that's what i'm into but uh we use this one and saw kind of to begin Get everything going tap our corners in then we'll use what we call our pizza cutter to kind of go fast if we're doing large panels we'll zip a whole edge down and then the trick on this is when you're doing the fabric you know give yourself a half an inch to an inch of fabric it's an easily fit inside of this channel when you're doing smaller fabric channel like half inch or five eighths you got to start bringing that measurement down on your leftover fabric if you don't you're going to end up having too much in there and actually bowing out your channel so but if you can see I mean it gives you a nice clean crisp edge so that you know that panel on the right would be definitely ready to go for a consumer and then you could wrap trim around it or you could build it into trim however you want to do or just have panels so what we'll do now is throw this back on the time lapse and then you'll see I'm gonna pizza cut down our seam here I'm gonna probably use our more of our flat tool to do around this speaker and then this one here I'm actually gonna grab out our little quarter inch staple and I'm gonna staple this out. So I'll film that one as well. And then the last, we'll do our inset here with the black fabric. And so I'll stop this time lapse one more time.
Okay, I'm gonna uh, kind of do the time lapse stop here. Um, I just started on this, but I want to film it actually. So I move the tripod over. We're gonna go ahead and staple this out with our quarter inch little stapler. There's a link to the one we use. It's just an Amazon stapler. It's a Sure Bonder. We've bought three or four of them in eight, nine years. They work super well. You can run tens of thousands of staples through them. And I, I can't remember, I 40 or 50 bucks. So super cool little staple gun. Uh, I wish like Milwaukee or DeWalt made a uh, like a 12 volt or a 18 volt cordless uh, upholstery type staple gun, but they don't. Uh, so jumping back into this, this will be our speaker grill. We're gonna do this out of black onyx fabric. You could, however, do this in the same matching color. Uh, would give you a nice clean finished look and then you'd be able to have the serviceability of just pulling this small fabric portion out and putting another panel back in. The fabric doesn't like to be really pulled out and then reinstalled, especially after time, you're gonna get a little bit of dust and stuff. And if you try to do it, you're gonna see that dirt uh, fabric doesn't clean well. Uh, so second one I wanted to show you here is this is gonna be our double screen surround. So black onyx fabric there with our Seymour screen material. And I wanted to show you a little error here. And this one we would redo if this was a customer, but you've got a little line here and that's because we caught one of these pieces of fabric just a little bit in our tool and it pulled and then it pulled a little seam just as if your shirt unraveled or uh, you know carpet unraveled. Probably most people have had that happen. So that is a good kind of error on our part. Again, we're not gonna redo this panel because it's for you know demo purposes, but we wouldn't want this line here for a customer, especially so close to a visual area. And then last, just as another note, if you're really into this and you're watching this whole video through, uh, you can screw through this material, but you gotta be extremely careful. So really what we do on this is we actually poke a hole with like a little pick, just like how we do the star ceilings. And then we'll wiggle the screw in and then we'll start screwing in. If you just try to screw it in, it will uh, wrinkle and it'll cause one of these exact little lines here and then your panel's ruined. So I'm gonna jump over here We've already dropped a few in there. So we got four on the bottom. We're gonna pop a fifth. And then we're gonna go across the top. And what we're trying to do is stay outside of the, uh, excuse me, we're trying to stay inside of where a cover plate would go. So they make, you know, standard decor cover plates, mid decor plates. Most of the time we're doing a fabric wall, it's gonna have Lutron Claro plates. So we wanna stay within that Lutron Claro plate. A good way to fix that is if you wanted to drop a piece of tape in and uh, you could tape around where that outlet was. I pretty much know where those sizes are at from doing them. And even then I've messed up and these little staples are pretty forgiving. So if you go too high, you can pull a row out and lower it back down. So again, what we got there is it's all loose in there. It's nice and tension there and then we'll come back through and just with a little tiny razor blade, Kind of trim this out. And this stuff's pretty durable fabric. I mean, this is a brand new, literally brand new razor blade out of the box, and it's has a little hard time cutting it. Okay, so then you're gonna have little frays like that. We've started using these little whisk screwdriver or <laughs> screwdrivers staples, and uh, can't speak this morning. Scissors to trim that stuff out. You don't want to have this stuff sitting inside of your electrical box so again that would be your electrical box ready to put an outlet in and what we're going to do is just screw a basic outlet in here with a uh, claro cover plate for aesthetics just so you can see the finished product but anyway that's what you're going to get there you know it depends how picky you want to get you could really get in there and clean but don't have any little frayers you know sitting in there if i had material to waste i would show you by pulling one of those how it can cause those lines but again i'm not going to do that Okay, so last portion of this before we throw an outlet in and put our Seymour screen material in, we're gonna use some Guilford Domain Anchorage. This is our Onyx material. So this is our go-to material for front walls, star ceilings, speaker grills. Uh, we also sell this just for speaker cloth if you have some grills you wanna redo. Great material. Okay, getting close to wrapping this one up. I'll start on the first panel. So fully fabric wrapped. Now we got a nice little Decora outlet in here with the Lutron cover plate, Claro plate. 
Second one over, we've done our seam. And now we got our black speaker grill in here. So you can see the edges are pretty darn tight. This one here, this one's a little tough because generally we'd have all four sections to pull so you can see the fabric get tight and clean that up. But again, darn nice look. And then we've got our screen surround. So this one here is very tough to do because of the uh, small panel portion of it. But again, we got a black surround and then it zips around and then we'll put our Seymour screen material in here. And so that'll give you a, basically three nice little display boards and you saw them all wrap and you can see kind of what you can do with this fabric. So pretty excited about that. Last thing I'm gonna do is just drop the uh, screen material in and go from there. Okay, so see more screen material. This is what they're calling their craftsman material. And so that will get stretched right into there. Give you a nice little screen surround. Now, a couple things to note, even in this picture, you could probably see I see that outline. Generally, we'll paint those black on that, or we'll just order this track in on black. So again, this is a display, so we can only do what we can do. But if you didn't do that, you would see that outline. You probably wouldn't see it when you had an image on it, but you definitely would see it you know, just visually walking around. So we've always painted these black. We've done, uh, I think, 10 of these. I, I don't remember how many we've done, but we've done quite a few of the Craftsmen, and all of them were painted black on this track and it just kind of blends right in and nice. So we'll go ahead and wrap that, and then that should uh, wrap up this video, and we'll go, uh, go from there. Okay, so that's gonna wrap this video up. It's all three of our uh, display boards. So we got our first one, it just shows a standard fabric wall, outer perimeter track, little wood blocking, outlet. Our main one here, just kind of Frenched in a, you, know, you got this we can't pull it you can see how that cleans out but nice little fabric wall here showing the different acoustical treatments you can put behind it how you can do a grill again if you ever had an error this thing could be pulled out fix the speaker and then this is how we do the craftsman style screens and again none of these are absolutely perfect they're you know so scaled down they're very hard to do on this small level but again visually you can tell you know fabric panel secondary outer for the masking and then a Seymour screen covering up your screen wall so pretty nice little setup to do for display and hopefully this will help you guys uh, decide if you want to do fabric walls tackle it yourself or if you're going to have uh, someone else come in and do it so a typical fabric wall cost somewhere in the range of uh that's a tough one because they vary so far between rooms i would say a complete theater room i would budget in the ten thousand dollar range to uh, get yourself fabric walls all the way around uh, and it'll, it'll go, it can go way up from there depending on what kind of treatments you do. If you start throwing stealth diffusers everywhere and TAD panels, that may reach up into the ten dollars or $15,000 range. See a little piece of fabric here I got to clean up and fix. But uh, overall, you know, these are going to be used to pop into the van and head out to customers' homes and just kind of show them what a fabric wall is all about. So real simple. If it uh, helped you out on the video, like and subscribe. And we actually have fabric wall videos i think there's about 10 total on our channel uh see more craftsman screen install fabric installs and then our old demo theater which we're actually standing in uh as far as that goes there's tons of information on that so anyway thanks a lot appreciate it